You know, a lot of times I get asked, like, what Disney books do I recommend for people? Like, what books should they read if they want to learn more about Disney history and the parks and all that stuff? And I feel like it's 2016. Like, who reads anymore? Like, reading's over. It's all about YouTube. It's all about tweets. Like, where are you going to get the best Disney history Instagrams? That's what it's about. Nobody reads books anymore. Nobody. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first of hopefully many of my Disney book reviews. Um, I love Disney. I love reading about Disney, the history and the parks and the people. Um, and a lot of people have asked me what Disney book should they check out if they want to learn more on their own. And I figure rather than throwing it all together in one video, I could go a little more depth into each book. So I'm going to start doing this, hopefully get one out a month. This month, we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite books. It is the book about the history of Disney World specifically, and it is called Reality Land by David Koenig. The True Life Adventures at Walt Disney World. It's an unauthorized book about the history of Disney World. Now, before I get into this, let me just say a couple of things. First off, I'm not like a professional book uh, critic. I, I've i never done this before. I'm, I'm not like, uh, you know, in the know of how to review a book. I'm approaching this less from uh, a reader's perspective, more from a Disney fan's perspective. And so I'm gonna talk about what the book offers for Disney fans. Secondly, as you could tell, I mean, there are a lot of notes here. I refer to this book a lot when I'm making videos and I need to look into the history of the parks. Uh, this is one of the few Disney books that I will actually reread a couple of times. Um, I try to read it like once a year just to like refresh my memory. Uh, so if you need a short version of this review, totally worth getting. I, can, I can't support it enough. Uh, that said, there are things that I take issue with the book. There, you know, it's not a perfect book. Um, so to get into it, this is a book that covers specifically the history of Walt Disney World. It starts off a l little before the project begins when Walt's thinking about Epcot and what his dream of the future is. And it ends off during the, I think during the Michael Eisner era, it might be just right when Bob Iger's taking over and they've got the Animal Kingdom open and things like that. When I read the book every year, it sort of falls into two specific halves for me. The first half of the book covers the almost what I would call like the old guard, where it's like um, the Magic Kingdom, the, the first hotels, the monorail loop, and then Epcot. And then you've got the second half of the book, which sort of focuses on the new guard, the Eisner era, and it focuses on MGM Studios, which is now Hollywood Studios, and the Animal Kingdom. And to me, the part that really sticks with me and that I enjoy the most out of this book is that first half. And that's because I feel like that is the part of the book that the author really um, sort of approaches with an optimistic viewpoint. I think the biggest criticism I have with this book is you can really tell that he's got a chip on his shoulder about Michael Eisner and just sort of like this sort of corporate takeover of Disney because he sort of speaks with a very, very um, almost cynical outlook of MGM Studios and Animal Kingdom and the decisions that the company makes after, you know, the old guard has left. And it leaves a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth, but I don't take it too seriously because that's his opinion and he's totally um, entitled to it. And um, there are plenty of other books out there that I think cover that era a little more fairly, so it doesn't bother me too much. And to be honest, the first half of this book that covers the Magic Kingdom and that covers Epcot is just so, so good that, you know, it makes up for it by far. Uh, what I will say is that this book really focuses on the practical elements of the creation of Walt Disney World. You know, there's less talk about the magic of the place and, and you know, what they're trying to create from a storytelling perspective and more focus on the practicality of building what was at the time the largest private construction project ever. And so there's a lot of focus on, you know, the construction crews and problems that they had with the unions and problems that they had with theft and just sort of the practical problems of trying to open this park on a specific deadline. And so if you're not a fan of like that behind the magic stuff where you're learning about, you know, the real world elements of it, then this book might not be for you. But if you are into that stuff, this is perfect. This is probably I would consider the most comprehensive look at the construction of the Magic Kingdom I've ever found. And I'm open to looking for books that do it better, but I've, I just haven't found any yet. Uh, they tell a lot of really cool stories. Uh, I think this book is really a great testament to Roy Disney, Walt's brother, who sort of put, put off his own personal retirement to make sure that this project got built. Uh, 
after the passing of his little brother, Walt. I think this is a great testament to uh, Dick Nunes, who is not a well-known name in the Disney community, I think, but should be because uh, his work on sort of managing this project uh, played such an important role in getting Disney World open. Uh, I, I can't suggest this book enough. I wanted to start this series with like a really good one because this is just one I keep turning to. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I do think there are some weird chapters in there. My biggest pet peeve, uh, besides the sort of negativity when it comes to the Eisner era, is that it's sort of structured weird. Like, it is very linear for the first, I'd say, third of the book, where it's, you know, Walt planning Disney and, you know, him passing away and then them taking over and building it and trying to get it open. It is a very linear progression of this uh, history. But then there starts... He starts to throw in chapters that cover the whole range of Disney history, but a focus on a specific topic. So, for instance, he's got a whole chapter in there on accidents and deaths in Disney World, which to me just seems sort of morbid. And, and don't get me wrong, if you're trying to provide a really unbiased look at Disney World, you do have to focus on things like injuries because they happen in the parks. And it's sort of interesting to learn about how they deal with them. But, you know, that chapter specifically is one chapter that covers, you know, from the beginning of the park opening to current day. And then on top of that, it just sort of, sort of loses context as it goes on. So, you know, you start getting some interesting stories and then it just seems like he's just listing off a report of who got hurt or killed and why. And there doesn't seem to be any like purpose behind it besides just filling it with all as much information as possible and it gets a little morbid it gets to the point where by the end of that chapter you're like maybe, maybe i shouldn't go to disney world um but of course it's still a really safe place i think just compressing it all in that one chapter makes it odd as opposed to just sprinkling throughout the history of the parks mentioning here and there where like some really major you know incidents did occur and so i think the safest way to approach this book is to enjoy the first half for what it is and this history of the parks and how they came to be and approach the second half with a grain of salt because the author clearly does have sort of this bias against michael eisner and nothing they seemed to do was ever right and it was just sort of an affront to walt's original dream i highly highly recommend this book it's a lot of fun to read uh, i have a link in the description below if you want to pick it up on amazon um, if you have book recommendations feel free to throw them out there in the comments below if you have your own personal review of this book, maybe you've read it and you disagree about the second half or you disagree about the first half, let me know in the comments below as well. You could also tweet me. I'm at Rob Plays. I want to thank you all for watching. Whatever you're doing this week, make the most of it because it makes it that much better. And I hope to see you all next time for the next Disney book review. Bye, everybody. For its initial run, Disney dollars were made up of over $2 million of $1 Mickey Mouse bills and $5 Goofy bills. Now, just to be clear, just because they were designed as a souvenir item initially, they certainly were not treated like one. This was, for all intents and purposes, actual currency that could be used within the Disney parks. 